It's a common knowledge that deep sea creatures are often weird. Those who'll do deep sea expedition will assume so. But what if one day, you're deep down there, thousands kilometers away from the surface, and you are hungry? You're excited to finally be back and have a roasted chicken. Then you look out the window, and you see a headless chicken, ready to be roasted, deep underwater? You would think your imagination is getting wild. But then, the headless chicken move. It's real. So, let me brought up the question. What exactly is headless chicken monster? First of all, yes, of course the headless chicken monster is real. The scientific name is Animniastes eximia. Animniastes means dreamer. Apparently, it's inspired by the biblical verse in Genesis 37:19, which says, "Here comes that dreamer." Okay, so I am not Christian and I have no idea what it means. If there is an interesting connection, let me know in the comment. Anyway, eximia means extraordinary. It's the only species in the genus, at least up till now. They are members of the Pelagothuridae family, which is the pelagic sea cucumber. More specifically, the deep sea swimming sea cucumbers, together with the Pelagothuria, which might or might not be more famous than the headless chicken monster. As stated in the name, they are sea cucumbers, but they don't look like the usual sea cucumber. And if you didn't know, sea cucumbers typically are benthic animals, meaning they stay on the seafloor. But again, not the case for the Pelagothuridae family, including the headless chicken monster. More on this later. They can be found in different oceans, so maybe they are quite widespread, but they live in the deep sea, which is why most people won't be able to meet them. Let's talk about the obvious things first. Their body is bulbose. The dorsal surface is convex, while the ventral is more flattened. They can grow up to 25 centimeters. They have a gelatinous body. This body makes them more lightweight than the typical sea cucumber, so they can lift off easily, but that also makes them frailer. Their body is pinkish. The young ones are brighter, meanwhile the adults are darker reddish purple. Their body is translucent, so you can see their internal organs. If you are wondering and need confirmation, yes, that is indeed their intestines you are looking at. In fact, we can see their whole digestive system, from mouth to anus. Sea cucumbers usually have an organ called respiratory trees. If you ever heard the fact that sea cucumbers suck water from their anus to breathe, that's the organ responsible for it. That organ does not exist in the headless chicken monster, or at least we couldn't observe it. We also couldn't just collect specimens and dissect them in the lab, since their body will most likely break away if we take it to the surface. Anyway, most sea cucumbers have tube feet, called podia. In the headless chicken monsters, these podia fuse to form some sort of sailor fin. The front fins are composed of 12 webbed podia. Meanwhile, the back fins are composed of 10 to 15 podia. They have around 20 oral tentacles around its mouth which are leaf-like and branched. If it's not obvious enough, they use the fin-like structures to swim. The anterior fins are used to row. Meanwhile, the posterior fins are for stabilizing. They are benthopelagic, meaning they still stay near the seafloor even though they are swimmers. This ability to swim helps them seek new places to feed. They feed with their oral tentacles. They usually sweep the sediments for organic particles. They don't eat that much, so this process is relatively quick, usually not even a minute. After they are done eating, they lift off and swim away. Okay, so if you are looking at this footage, your eyes might glance at this and some of you might be thinking, is that poop? And yes, that is poop. They are often observed defecating before taking off. This help reduce their body weight so it's easier to swim. Oh and, this process actually helped the ecosystem. The poop contains some sediments which are clean of particles. Well, relatively. This is a form of bioturbation. The physical movement of soil by organism. Maybe you've heard the fact that worms burrowing through the ground makes the soil's quality better. That's also bioturbation. It changes the composition and could help the ecosystem going. Of course, the headless chicken monster don't poop to deliberately keep the ecosystem going, but you know, 
we gotta give them credit because it helps. As with other deep sea creatures, they also exhibit bioluminescence. It's usually triggered by physical contact. Their skin is fragile, and that actually helps them avoid predators. You might be thinking, how so? Well, think of it like this. When a predator attacks them, it made a contact. Hence, it can trigger their bioluminescence. Because their body is frail, when they are attacked, skins will fall off easily. That glowing skin can then distract the predators. Of course, it's not a very effective way to be safe, but hey, as long as it helps them increase their survivability, why not? By the way, if to this point you are still wondering why they are called the headless chicken monster, it's literally just because they look like a headless chicken ready to be roasted. They also have other nicknames, of course. Some people look at them swimming and think it looks graceful, so they called them the Spanish dancer. Do take note though, there is another species of unrelated animal called the Spanish dancer nudibranch. If you look it up on the wiki, you'll most likely found that one instead. So, if you are Spanish and you are a dancer, then hey, you have two easy choices for your spirit animals. Anyway, some also called them the pink see-through fantasia. That sounds more gracious and more mysterious, doesn't it? Still, I like the name Headless Chicken Monster better. How about you? Which name do you prefer? Regardless of your choice, I hope you enjoy your day. And that's all for now.